Okay everyone, welcome back. Here is my bag of um, VTEC buckets and, and shims. Um, they, they came really, really quickly. They came in the middle of the week. So uh, we're back here again today, able to, uh, able to crack on with my VFR. Um, one, thing, uh, one thing I did need to do, um, which is probably worth noting, is that I could not get a 2.80 um, VTEC lifter. Um, they, they are available, however, they were on back order and they would have taken longer to come. So, and I didn't want to wait any longer, but they did have 2.79. So 2.79 is fine, it's well within the tolerance, so it just means it's 0 0.01 of a millimeter um, um, larger gap. It, it's, it's, it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be a showstopper by any stretch of the imagination. Um, anyway, moving on, what we need to do is we need to swap out all the lifters that are, um, that are problematic and also swap out the, um, the shims on again the problematic ones what i'm going to do though i'm going to do one of each i'm not going to go through every single one with you because again obviously this video is um quite a lengthy lengthy video but um i do want to just run through it um and one thing i do want to do is um ensure that we lubricate them correctly and there is something that we need to do in order to achieve that <laughs> Okay, there is, a, uh, there is a few more steps that we need to do before we can nail the bike back together properly. However, what I do want to do is I just want to discuss how we're going to lubricate everything. Now, bear in mind, obviously, that we've had everything out, in and out, in and out. <clears throat> and obviously, the, the, coat, the film of oil that is in the, um, that is in the bearing surfaces of the camshafts and um, obviously it's, um, it's journals and everything is, is not going to be there like it, like it should be. So what we do... Uh, on reassembly we're going to make up uh, some some assembly grease and um, to do so what we do is we take um molybdenum molybdenum disulfide commonly called black molly i don't even know if i pronounced that right i've never really known how it's actually pronounced but black molly grease and all it is is this this thick black thick black grease um we take some of that Like so, I've got a little jam jar lid just here. Take some of that. Wipe my finger off. And then an equal amount of oil. So we're mixing this in a ratio of 50-50 or one to one as the, uh, as the Honda manual calls it, uh, with engine oil. That'll do it. And we're giving it a good mix. We can always add a bit more oil if we need to. As you can see, it thins it out quite a lot when it's mixed with the uh, when it's mixed with the engine oil. And then what we do is we apply this to everywhere that we need to. So we're going to put it on things like the the lifters, the camshaft lobes, um, the, the, the journals where the camshafts sit, all of that good stuff. And basically what this is, is it's a thicker viscosity. Um, it's an oily grease effectively what we've made here. This solution is slightly thick. It's obviously thicker than, than normal oil. So if we were to, we could just pour oil on and I know a lot of people just do that, but this is a bit more persistent. It stays there a little bit longer. So when we first fire the bike up, we're not running anything dry. And that is the idea behind this. Um, it's what the manual calls for, and it's what I prefer to do. That way, you, you've got peace of mind at the first crank. Everything's all, uh, you know, all good. Um, you do, of course, have the option of pulling all the, uh, disconnecting all the coils so that the, uh, the bike doesn't fire. Some people just like to do that, turn the bike over until they've got oil pressure. If that's what you want to do, then by all means do that. I just feel more comfortable um, using the Black Molly uh, solution to ensure that everything is lubricated. Anyway, 
enough of that for the moment because we're not actually going to use that right now i'll put that to one side what we are actually going to do now is we're going to fit the replacement shims and the replacement buckets into their respective locations i'll do one of each um because there's no point in dwelling on the subject and doing all of them um but bear in mind once we fit them what we do need to do is go through the whole process of checking the clearances again which again involves refitting the camshafts um, obviously putting the stopper tools back in to the VTEC buckets um, and all that good stuff um, and then making sure that our, our, our replacement parts have brought the, the, uh, the clearances into spec because um, obviously the last thing that you want to do is find that they're, they're out of spec. If you've got the measurements right in the first place and you've bought the correct parts to replace them with, you, sh you shouldn't have any drama, but it's always good to, uh, good to double check and it'll only take probably three quarters of an hour to have them in and out um, again um, in order to, uh, you know, just to confirm. Anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fit um, a shim to this inlet valve and demonstrate. Okay, here is the lifter removed from this uh, from this valve and I've taken the uh, the old shim uh, out and here is the brand spanking new one um, obviously as you remove these the the shims tend to stick inside the lifter um, don't bother trying to put the new one uh, back in its place what we simply do is fit it right there on top of the um, on top of the valve and then simply Drop the lifter back in. Now you'll know I haven't actually um, lubricated this yet. That's because everything's got to come in and out, in and out, um, and I'll do that all at the end. Anyway, let's move on to replacement of one of the VTEC lifters. Okay, this this one here is one of the troublesome VTEC lifters. So I'm going to pop it out. I'm able to get the get it out by finger. Now what we need to do is remove this because this needs to go onto the brand new lifter. It can be a pain to get out sometimes. Right, slide pin holder. As I said before, we need to make sure the little dowel goes in, pointing down. And then pop it into the bucket and then fit it into the location that it needs to be. Right, as you can see at the moment, um, all the VTEC valves are sitting proud. That's because all the springs are in and I haven't fitted any of the uh, slide pin stopper tools. So that's what I do need to do next. So what I'm gonna do is replace the ones that need replacing, um, as I said before, based off, of my, uh, based off of my chart. Do all of that, refit the camshafts, recheck the clearances, and then pull them out, remove the stopper tools again, and then refit the camshafts. Once I've done all that, and I'm happy that the clearances are where they need to be, I'll bring it all back in, and then we can move on to the next stage. Okay. I've had the camshafts back in, I've checked the clearances, everything is where I want it to be now. Absolutely everything is within spec. I've then removed them again because what we're going to do next is we are going to lube everything up, make sure everything's um, going to run smooth. Now, on, the, uh, on these valves here, the standard valves, we've got the... Um, we've got the uh, We've obviously got the shim, just want to give it a little lube, a little bit of a lube in there, and then refit it. Then I'm going to lubricate the top of the uh, lubricate the top of the lifter, and I'm going to do that for all of them. Again, that one needs to come out. I'll do that one in a moment, just to demonstrate. Um, and then all the bearing journals. I'm just going to lubricate all of those just like so. Um, and then what we're doing is we're avoiding the camshaft running dry uh, on first start. And um, yeah, we'll, we, we should be good. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to crack on, I'm going to get everything out, lube up everything, lubricate the shims, all of that good stuff, and then I'll bring you back in as we uh, reinstall the camshafts. Okay, camshafts, let's get them refitted. Um, Obviously they've been out several times and I promise you that this is the last time that they'll actually uh, be coming out. Everything is exactly as we want it. The camshafts are going back in, everything's going to get buttoned up and everything will be good. Um, okay, so I've got the, uh, the inlet camshaft first. What I need to do is recover the chain. Making sure that it's engaged on the sprocket down below. Hook it over and sit it in its journals but I do need to come on get out of the way I do need to try and align it the best I can with the cylinder head I think we're almost there let me just rotate it one two and try that one Uh, come around the other side and just double check and yeah that actually looks perfect that's exactly where we want it to be um, so I'll go and grab the uh, the exhaust camshaft off of the uh, off of the bench fit that and then uh, make sure that one's aligned and then we should be good Again, rear exhaust, that's the mark we're looking at. And as you can see, that puts these lobes up and towards this one. Um, getting, them, getting them aligned and in the chain can be a bit problematic, as we've experienced already. Um, and I'm way off there. Let me rotate it a bit. Probably about there. No. How's that looking? I just need to grab a torch. No. Round one more. And that looks good yeah the mark is now lined with the uh, with the cylinder head and as you can see the lobes are pointing up as they should okay what i need to do now is i need to go and get a few gaskets because we've got to replace some o-rings on here as you can see on this there's a little o-ring which needs replacing um, and likewise on there and we've got a couple of in here which also need replacing and i'll go and grab the parts that i need for those so give me a moment to go and grab them and i'll bring you back Okay, what I've picked up here is I picked up, um, a, a, this is a gasket kit, um, it's referred to as kit A, I think, I think it's kit A or something like that, anyway, well I'll, there's the part number, I'll leave a link to it in the description, and what this contains is um, pretty much um, most of the seals that we require in order to do this job. There's a few in here that we don't actually need, um, however, it's better to buy this kit because it works out cheaper than buying the ones you do need individually. So. It includes like copper washers for the four bolts on the uh, on the camshaft cap. Um, it's got these here. Um, these little sleeves go in there like that. And there's the old O-rings, and you can see the new ones in the kit. Um, there, there's even the aluminium washers that they give you for the for the. Um, for the uh, um, cam chain tensioners, they, they even include new ones of those. So most of everything that's in this bag you will use on this job. There's the odd one or two, like this big one here is, is not for anything that I've um, found up to now. So I don't think we need that one. So that one will be um, discarded and unused. Um, anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bust this open and I'm gonna re uh, fit the, uh, the, seal, the seals here that I need prior to um, fitting the camshaft caps and then uh, we can look at getting them torqued down. Okay, in here, you can see we've got, um, let's grab those ones, put them back in there so we don't lose them. 
in here you can see we've got the copper washers and the aluminium ones for the cam chain tensioners and here we've got a selection of, uh, of smaller seals that we will require in and around. Um, the, these ones here fit over these. Obviously these seals prevent oil seeping down into the spark plug wells because that would be bad. Probably end up with a misfire fairly rapidly. Uh, and inside this bag, we cut this open. Inside this bag is the seals for these. One and two and there we are so that is all the seals replaced up to this point there is two more that go there's another two of these basically on top of the camshaft cap um, but we'll fit those once we've got it on and torqued down so let me go and grab the uh, grab the parts that i need off of the bench and we'll get this uh, we'll get this buttoned up okay we'll make sure that the uh, the dowels are in position and then what we're going to do a bit more of our black molly solution just inside here uh, you, you can't go over the top of this stuff. Because we want it to be lubricated. There we go. Right. Again, making sure it's the right way around. In to in. And then fitter on top. Now, the four inner bolts have the copper washers on. And we'll replace each one. With a brand new one out of the kit um, and then what we'll do we'll nip them down bit by bit till such time as they're snugged up and then we'll get the torque wrench out and obviously check the torque setting in the manual and make sure that they're uh, torque to spec okay so let's start them by finger Okay, I've got these in with fingers. Before I actually tighten it down, what I do need to do is I need to get these caps on um, because otherwise I won't be able to once this is tight because there'll be no lateral movement in the camshaft as we've discussed previously. So again, a bit of black, a bit of black molly just inside, just to ensure that we're all looped up. Get the inlet one on. There we go. I'll start with fingers and again for the exhaust one plenty of lubrication so we're not going to dry and then get those bobs started as well right now what we'll do is start snugging these down opposites as I said before stage because obviously we want to apply the right torque. We'll do these a little bit at a time. And again we're just going to snug them up and then come back with torque.
And there we go. Right, that is them all snugged up. What I do need to do now is get those four in and then we'll get the torque wrench out and we'll go around and torque them all up. Okay, the torque spec for all of the bolts up here is 12 Newton meters. So I'll start with these ones. I'm gonna make two passes on them because as it snugs down, um, it can sometimes affect the torque. And on this one, we're going to go to cross pattern. That one is a pain. What I need to do is get get an extension and come down from above. Just for that one. Around them all again, just to double check. Again, I need flaming extension for that one. There was such a slight bit of movement on a couple of those, so that's the reason why I went round again. Okay, they're all buttoned up. What I need to do now is remove the stopper tool from the cam chain tensioner, and then we're going to uh, turn the crank twice just to make sure that everything turns freely and that the tongue marks are lined back up where they should. Okay, we're going to pull the stopper tool. Um, again, it didn't reset, but what I'll do, I'll just get reach in there with my fingers and give the chain a little tug and I just felt it reset itself. So now we're all good. Okay, so it's currently at the 3T mark, TDC, uh, on the compression stroke for cylinder three. What I'm gonna do is rotate it twice. That's one. And we should be coming round. I can feel the compression and there we go we're all aligned again and here's the line there and just check the other one and again I can see that one's good again you won't be able to see that one on the camera obviously as you're turning it if you feel resistance any resistance as in it feels like it's actually stopped then there's clearly a problem and something's locking up somewhere be it a valve um, contacting the piston which means that the time is well off so you need to reset it um, however i'm happy with all of that um, i'm happy that we're all well lubed and the there's a good coat of lubrication on the cam lobes uh, again provided by that block not there the black molly solution that we've applied okay what i'm going to do now is Get the, um, get the upper tensioner fitted. Then there's two dowels that go in here, again with seals. And then once that's done, we can fit the cam cover. So I'll go and get all the bits that I need and then we'll bring it back. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna install the dowels in the bearing cover. And these seals here um, don't come in that little kit that I, uh, that I was talking about a moment ago. So these ones are purchased separately. Uh, which is unfortunate because these aren't particularly cheap either uh, but as you can see they're an o-ringer they've got a, a weird profile to them pop them over the top like so and 
if you're interested there is the part number again i will link this in the uh, in the description below so that you can uh, go and find everything you need right next thing we do and the last thing before we fit the uh, before we fit the cam cover the last part that we need to fit should i say is top tensioner guide snug them down and these again will do to 12 newton meters and two top wrench one two and there we go right what we need to do next is we need to fit the uh the top cover now there's a few things we need to do to that there's a few gaskets that need fitting and we also need a little bit of black sealant or, or gasket sealant um doesn't have to be black necessarily but um i'm gonna go grab all the things we need and then we'll get that ready and then we can get it fitted okay next thing we need to do is we need to uh we need to prep the cam cover to go back on um we've got this gasket here that's the part number there is one for the front as well but you'll notice that the part number is different I've no idea why they actually look identical in every way, so I don't, I don't know why they've got different part numbers. I can only assume that there is a minor difference that can't be seen um, between the two. Um, so obviously you need one of each. Again, I will link the part numbers in the bottom. And in the inside here where the spark plug wells are, we've got to fit these ones. And, um, there's a part number for those again. I'll link it below. So we need to remove the old gaskets from the cam cover and they're on there well um, what we need to do is use a bit of gasket sealant to hold them in position and that stops them falling off and also helps them to make a good seal so there's those two off and you can see the ceiling that's left over from before this one's like a weird brown color um, but we'll pop it off and there is the old gaskets removed so what i'll do i'll throw them to one side i'm gonna just clear up these surfaces just to just to clean them up make sure that there's no traces of the old silicon and then we'll bring it back and we'll get the new ones on right then that's the uh that's the cover cleaned up best i can what i'm going to use now is this silicon black um liquid gasket basically um it's a high temperature one um and what we're going to do is run a very thin amount around the gaskets mountains we don't need to go crazy with this stuff um, and again around here i'm not putting too much on as you can see i'm only putting a tiny amount this is literally just to hold the gasket in place it's not to provide a seal okay let's leave that a bit more there actually Right, I'll leave that there for a second. And then what we need to do is we need to come down to the cylinder head because what we need to do is we need to apply a decent amount to these little half moon sections on the cylinder head. Now, if the gasket's gonna leak anywhere, this is where it's gonna leak from. So we put a decent amount here and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna thread it round with my finger in a second a 
put the cat back on. We don't need that anymore. And then just smooth it round. Just getting the transitions. between these half moons and the cylinder head. A nice little coat, just to ensure that when the gasket sits, it does seal properly at those points, because that's where it'll leak, if it's gonna leak anywhere. And there we go. Right, what I'm gonna do, quickly clean my finger off and then we'll uh, get the gaskets out of the packets and fill them. Okay, we will start with the inner ones. They only go on one way around, so it's obvious which way up they go. Get that in there like that. That's nice and stuck. Same for this one. You can see there's like a little lip, so yeah, you can't get it, you can't get it upside down because it just won't go. And there's that one. And the next, the gasket on the outside. Now these gaskets aren't cheap; they're fairly pricey, and this is one of the things that bumps the cost. Of this job up. I think these uh, I think these gaskets were best part of about £40 each which is quite significant uh, obviously what we need to do is, again there's a lip around here which sits into that groove and we need to just make sure we get it the right way around. Um, these little notches here fit in there just to make sure we get the alignment correct. Same at this end. And there we go. Right, all this gasket sealants therefore is just to help us fit the cover without the gasket falling off. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give this five minutes just to go off slightly and have a cup of tea. And then we will be ready to fit it up to the cylinder head. Okay, I've given it a couple of minutes just to start to go off slightly. Um, hopefully this, this gasket will stay in the position that I want it to stay in. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna offer this up to the cylinder head. Um, obviously, we do need to maneuver around a few things, um, but once it's in, it's in, and we'll be all good. Um, just lower it gently in and just as it goes on just make sure that the semicircles at each end and again on this side as well just here make sure these are fully engaged and what I do need is my torch just to check on that one and again, we're, uh, yeah, we're all good. Um, looks like it went on absolutely perfectly. And you can look down the spark plug wells and you can see that they're sitting in the correct place. Okay, perfect. That actually went a lot easier than I was expecting it to. I thought it was gonna fight me and try and fall off and all sorts of stuff. So I was quite pleased with that. Um, the front one can be a little bit more troublesome because you haven't quite got as much room, but the rear one, is uh, obviously it went on like a dream. Okay, next what we need to do is get the four bolts in. Right, what we need to do next is obviously fit the uh, the bolts for the cam covers. Again, these have gaskets as well. That's the part number. Again, I'll link them in the description. But these have markings on. And if you look uh, on that side, you can see it says up. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. 
says up on them and obviously that's because that side's got to go up so what i need to do fit four of these to the cylinder head and then fit the bolts now on this cylinder on, on this um on this cover you'll notice on these front two bolts there's these little triangles now that triangle there denotes that these two bolts are to be tightened and torqued prior to these two so get them all in um but before you tighten and torque the rear ones tighten and torque the front one it does specify that in the manual but that's what these little triangle indications are there for so i'll get the um i'll get the, the other two uh, gaskets in we'll get the uh, bolts in i'll torque them up and then we'll uh, i'll bring it back in and discuss because you don't need to see me talk everything you've uh, you've seen that plenty Okay, that is the cam cover on and all buttoned up, all tightened, all torqued and good to go. The only thing I need to do now with the rear cylinders is refit the bolt for the cam chain tensioner. Um, the little aluminium washer comes in the kit, fit that and we're going to just simply pop it back in. Tighten it up and then torque it up to spec and then that is the rear done what we need to do next is the front now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do the front i'm going to carry everything that i need to do with the front cylinders get it all back together get it all buttoned up and then it's a case of um refitting all the uh, air box components and such and such and the pair and everything um i'm not going to film the front because the front is identical in every way to the rear um and obviously we've we've been inside um, I'll get that all done. I'll get the radiators mounted back up where they need to be. I'll get all the coil sticks in um, and then I'll get the airbox in, get the fuel tank refitted. And then what we'll do, I'll bring you back in when we're, uh, we're ready to start the bike. Um, hopefully that'll all go uh, as expected and with no massive dramas and no massive explosions. And um, then we'll, uh, we'll have a final thoughts. Okay guys, see you, see you shortly. Okay, welcome back. As you can see, the bike is, uh, you know, partially reassembled. Uh, the fuel tank and the airbox are, uh, are certainly on, and uh, yeah, the um, the panels and the radiate the radiators aren't quite mounted back where they want to be, and there's a reason for that. I'll come on to that in a second. Um, I've done everything I needed to do with the front bank of cylinders. They're all back up, timed up, uh, and all back together with the cover back on, and everything is torqued down as as it should be. Uh, pretty much identical in every way to. The, uh, the rear banker cylinders. Um, earlier on, I was talking about the, uh, the fact that the front um, cam cover had a different gasket um, and obviously a different part number. Now I have realized why that is. And there is a slightly different shape to the front of the cam cover behind the front wheel. I'm guessing it's just to give a little bit of clearance if the, uh, if the front wheel was at full, uh, well, the, you know, the front sh uh, suspension forks were compressed fully. It just gives a little bit more clearance at the front um, it's the only thing I can think of why it's there. Um, I'll put a little overlay now uh, so you can see what I mean by the, uh, by, the, by the cutout, but that is the only difference and that's the reason why it has a different part number. Just in case anyone was curious. Anyway, talking about gaskets, the only other thing I needed to do was refit this cover um, over the timing hole uh, and again there's a gasket for that as well, which uh, again I will link the part number for in the, uh, in the description below. Right. Now we're at the stage where we want to try and start the bike. Um, obviously I've um, disconnected all the fuel lines and everything. So when I turn the ignition on the fuel pump primed, what I want to be doing is just having a look underneath uh, the tank just to make sure there isn't fuel spurting out everywhere because obviously that would be bad. So first things first, what I'm going to do, turn the key on. We heard the fuel pump prime. Hopefully you heard that on the video. Um, I'm just going to, have a look underneath. I can't see anything squirting out at this stage. There would be, there would be fuel squirting out if, um, it, you know, if I hadn't done something correctly. Um, when I fitted the high pressure fuel line, I did put two new washers either side of the banjo, so they're all uh, renewed and good. And now we're at the stage where we want to fire it up. Now this is obviously the most nerve-wracking uh, point in any. Um, whenever you do anything with your engine like this. Obviously I've had the top end apart and the timing, I've been messing with the timing. Obviously I'm confident in my own ability. If you're not, then I suggest perhaps you, you do get somebody else to uh, to check it for you. Um, otherwise, 
anyway, we're uh, we're ready to go. I have put a bit of fuel back in the tank so that we can fire her up. Um, okay. Contact. What I'm going to do once I've started is I will um, go around and just make sure that there's no oil leaks. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a bit of smoke off the exhaust or something like that because there has been a little bit spilt. But uh, if we do see a bit of smoke rising out the bike, don't be surprised. So here we go. Straight off the button, it cranked probably two or three times. And as you can hear, it's running absolutely beautifully. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to rev it at all. Because we've had the top end apart, I want to make sure that there's oil going through it all before we do anything like that. The oil pressure light has gone out, so we're good there. Just going to check around the cramp covers now, make sure there's no oil leaking out anywhere. Okay, I'm absolutely pleased with that. I can't see any evidence of any oil leaking out of any of the gaskets anywhere. Um, it all looks really, really good. All that remains for me to do really now is to button the radiators back up into their locations. I've got a couple of brackets underneath which um, also double as um, brackets for the oil lines. Just which they, they just sit at the bottom of the radiator and support them. Put those bolts back in and then they're good. Put the tank down and then get the side panels on. And that guys is it. Well, this has been a bit of an epic. It's probably one of the, the longer projects that I've had to do uh, on my channel um, so far. And the reason I did it was because it was very, very much requested. So I hope that you, uh, I hope you appreciate the level of um, detail that's involved in this kind of a, this kind of a task. It's quite in depth. So um, by all means, have a go yourself if you've uh, if you've got the technical ability and you understand how to time the engine. If you don't understand how to time the engine, I would I would make the recommendation that you don't attempt this yourself because there is potential for catastrophic engine damage. So that said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, there's plenty more to come from uh, from Kev Shed, but uh, yeah, leave me a like, a comment, you know, all that good stuff, and don't forget to subscribe as well. Subscribe for more. Um, got loads of bike work to do, not just on the VFR, you know, all the uh, all the bikes that are behind me as well, and a couple of scooters and the cars. Um, yeah, don't forget, um, you can also follow me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll leave links to those in the description below. As I said as well, any uh, any dis um, you know part numbers for anything, all the gaskets, all that good stuff. Again, I will leave them. In the description so that you can find uh, find them fairly quickly and what i'll do i'll have a little bit a little bit of a hunt around um and see if i can uh find the best price for all of those parts because the one that i bought wasn't necessarily going to be the best price because it is possible that they're available somewhere else cheaper anyway guys thank you very very much take care now bye bye and i'll see you in the next video